The BNPR Show is brought to you by these awesome people. Hey there, you beautiful people. We have a great show for you this time. Here are the highlights. First, Everlasting Flame, where every frame is a manga panel. Second, Yummy Ghibli Food. And third, how to make a watercolor 3D scene. Welcome to the BNPR Show, a celebration of stylized and non-photoreal rendering. Let's switch things around this time. Go ahead and feast your eyes on these artworks. What a banger! Here are a few animations you might want to ogle. The first is Everlasting Flames, Honkai Impact 3rd Animated Short by Mihoyo Anime. This needs no introduction, but let's appreciate what they did exceptionally well. The framing of each shot is so well done, they look like manga panels. When isolated and standalone, they are powerful and communicative. You cannot find 3D shading flickers, they polish them off very well. The colors used are full of clarity and evoke emotions as required. It's a masterpiece. The next two animations are music videos, which we can't show, but we can show you some screenshots. The second animation is Fuzzy Bumble, Not A Say, animation by Lukas Ruzinek. The character design is simple yet very interesting. A lot of grease pencil was used in this animation, which sped up production, along with the film grains and cardboard paper texture. The limited color palette also sells the nostalgic look. Well done! The third animation is an opening video by Monarch, a high school RPG with the animation by Hooray! The animation has a lot of high school elemental components, a hint of vivid red color as the accent. One thing we can't show here is the camera works. They flow so well from one shot to another. We also spot a few places with line art from Blender, but not sure if it is grease pencil line art or malt line shaders. It's a really cool music video and opening video. There are a few more NPR animations in the show notes, so make sure to check those out as well. Now to some great news. Beer is fully funded. So I gotta say thank you to everyone who has contributed. 
This means we have enough money to code the front end of beer. The extra funds will be used for maintenance and coding more NPR features. We have someone working on the beer UI right now. And more updates on that after we hit the first development milestone. In other news, we have a new beer fundraiser blend file set. Just look at these. The first blend file is Cyber Girl by A Version of Reality, a very complex model. He also wrote a blog post explaining all the features in the model. Next is this cool ISS pixel art animation by Felipe Dilly. This scene is optimized for pixel art, so it's really nice. The third file is by Lowell Camp, a sci-fi mix fantasy. Love it. Go grab them. The link should be somewhere under this video. Are you ready for malt nodes? Because it is available in the malt development branch, so be sure to check that out. If you're lost with the nodes, go look for the video in the show notes in show number 27. The grease pencil line art has a few improvements in the works. Intersection detection has again been sped up. Line art's lines can be extended to produce this sketchy result. This works just like Freestyle's backbone stretcher. Lines can now be detected on the border of smooth and flat shaded, as well as on creased edges. Dotted lines have also been added. Shadow outline is also in the works, but we're not sure if this will work with an external render engine like Malt. You can find the latest build with these features on Graphical. The first tutorial is Watercolor by Gaku. You may have seen this artwork blowing up on Twitter just about now. Now he's revealing the techniques used in it. For the external outline, we use the Solidify modifier with a single-sided material. Next, use a cloud texture to displace the mesh and make it look more organic. Set the background color to white. For the color of the mesh, add a vertex color node in the material. Vertex paint the mesh with a bright desaturated color. Then blur the vertex paint. For internal lines, use the grease pencil line on the surface of the mesh. Then sculpt and adjust the line's thickness. For extra watercolorness, add a floating blurry stroke to blend the solidify modifier outline. Next, tint the grease pencil lines. And finally, Add a grease pencil noise modifier to animate the strokes. And poof! You get watercolor-like painting in 3D. The second tutorial is how to make Ghibli food in Blender by CG Mo. As of this writing, we only have four parts. Part one, make a table from a flat plane, add a wood plane texture, and recolor the texture with the color ramp. To add shading info, add a diffuse shader then blend it with the texture. Next, model a simple plate. For the material, add a basic defuse. For specular-like effect, add a layer weight node and then blend them together. Then, add an outline. Part two. Now make a bowl from a hemisphere. Apply the same materials as the plate. For the pattern on the bowl, UV unwrap that part of the mesh Assign the mesh to a new material with the pattern. Then copy the material from the plate and combine the nodes with the pattern. For the soup, add a circle and UV unwrap the mesh. For the material, give it a white outline and add two noise textures, mix them and then recolor. Part three. Now model the corn from a low poly circle. The kernel material is a simple tune with a layer weight node facing as the outline. The corn cob center uses the same material as the kernel with saturation and value adjusted. Add a displacement modifier and a cloud texture to give the corn a little variation. Part four, now model the beans. For the material, duplicate the kernel material, then extend it with the bean texture. Duplicate the bean a few more times. And that's the four parts that are available right now. There should be more tutorials in the series at a later date. But this is already looking yummy to me. The third tutorial is Stylized Sky Shader by Pierrick Picot. 
There are two parts to the shader, the sky color and the cloud color. Both are done as a world material. The sky color is made from a gradient texture, rotated to get the vertical gradient. Now pick a few nice sky colors and recolor the gradient using a color ramp. The clouds are made from two different sized noise textures. Next, blend them together. To limit the cloud visibility from going below the horizon, multiply the cloud textures with the gradient from the sky. Now you can recolor the clouds. To mix between sky and the cloud, use the noise texture color ramp as the blending factor. To animate the clouds, animate the rotation of the noise texture's mapping node. And with that, you can create an animated, super stylized sky and clouds. Give this one a try, it's pretty easy. Okay, now, a little bird has been telling me that less than 2% of people who watch the BNPR show went to actually see the show notes after the show. So that's kind of like 98% of our audience missing all the cool animations and tutorials not shown in the show. Quite a lot to miss. It's like trying to pass a test with 2% of the knowledge. Anyway, go ahead and click the show notes and go find some gems not shown here. And this show is again made possible by these awesome people. Please thank them kindly. Before we go, one final question. Do you love the segments being switched around this time? 